What's up, Northview Church? What's happening? Good to see you. Welcome to the party. I hear that's some of the language you use sometimes. Uh, uh, I want to say hello to all of our locations, all the campuses here at Northview Church. 15 locations is what I hear. So shout out to all of our uh, locations joining, all of our God Behind Bars ministries, those people watching from home, doing church from another location, watching at a later day. Everybody here in the room, would you clap your hands, greet one another, say hello to your church, Northview. Awesome. Uh, you heard Pastor CJ in that intro uh, say, my name is Travis Gibson. I'm a pastor. I help lead a church in San Diego called The Rock Church. And uh, yeah, we love San Diego. got one woo. Appreciate you. Um, <laughs> love San Diego. We, we were really enjoying our time out here uh, in Indy. The, the, the pilot, as we were flying in, said it was only an hour and 40 minutes left to Indy. And I said, are we going to India? Where are we going? Wait a minute. I, I never heard it called Indy before. And so uh, Indianapolis has been fantastic. Y'all have a different type of heat, a different type of hot. It's sweaty, it's muggy, you gotta bring that deodorant everywhere you go, just hit it when you, everywhere, just hit it a little bit more, just in case, just in case, but uh, it's been great. We, uh, we saw gas prices, I traveled with my wife, Vanessa, uh, she's a first grade school teacher, we traveled together here, and she goes, babe, look, the gas is $3.73. We said, oh my, oh my Jesus, what is going on here? It's $6 in California. We're having like real family decisions at the gas pump, like, do you want bread, or should we get a gallon of gas? What do you wanna get? I feel like we shouldn't have to make those decisions, but we are uh, making those decisions. But I brought a picture of my family. Uh, again, that's my wife, Vanessa. She's uh, been teaching in elementary uh, school. She's a first grade teacher for the last 17 years. This is my son, Levi. This is a couple years ago. He's now almost seven. He's into BMX bike riding. He's an artist. He's into anything superhero. My daughter, Anaya, uh, she loves to dance. She just got back from Dance Nationals in Kansas City last week. And so she does uh, a little bit of lyrical, a little bit of jazz, a little, little, little bit of tap. I'm not gonna show you, but she can do it really well. She can tap dance, she's great. And um, I thought this, this picture was great because um, it's probably in October, we're taking the pictures for the, you know, the holiday cards and all those things you send out. And I'm wearing this Sherpa jacket, but it's probably 78 degrees because it never changes in San Diego. And so I'm sweating there, different type of heat so I can manage it. But uh, that's, the, that's our family, L -l love them so much. And what a, what a privilege and joy it is to be here today. Pastor CJ said, hey, would you come help us kick off a new teaching series around the topic of prayer? Everybody shout prayer. prayer. Yeah, prayer. And really the, the series will be three weeks and some of his friends are coming in to share on tough prayers. And, and if, if we ever needed to pray tough prayers, it was right now. If we ever needed to be a church that showed a divided world what a united church looks like around prayer, it's right now. Come on, somebody. We gotta be a people that prays, a church that prays, husbands and wives that prays. Clap your hands. We gotta be a church that prays and believes God for the miraculous. We sang those songs earlier, but we don't wanna just sing the songs. We wanna mean the songs. And so the, the series is really about the power of prayer and how uh, we, we need to have the, the, the courage and the boldness, and we can have courage and boldness to approach the throne room of grace with, with audacious prayers. And, and even we, we have this, this great grand God that we serve who breathed the universe into existence, but he invites us, you and me, in all our imperfection to speak with him in prayer. Man, what a gift, what an opportunity. And so would you join me in opening up in prayer at all of our locations, bow your heads and pray. Uh, Jesus, we love you. We're so grateful that we're here because of you. You're our message, that's all we got today. And so we invite you, Spirit of Jesus, Holy Spirit, to uh, speak through me and speak to all of us what you have to say on the topic of these tough prayers that we all need to be praying. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout it, amen. 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 Um, one of the shows that my family and I like to watch together, and there, and there aren't a ton of shows uh, as a family that you can watch that you can count on being pretty decent these days, but one of them is The Family Feud. Anybody? Family Feud, right? Right? Uh, 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 how many remember when Al Borland from, from Tool Time was the host? A few of you, right? Uh, most of you caught on when Steve Harvey was the host. And, and so Steve Harvey's there, and if you don't watch the show, here's how it works. You got two teams, sometimes uh, five family members on one side, and you got five family members on the other side, or sometimes it's five celebrities versus these five celebrities. And they bring one of them uh, together against the other, and then Steve starts out with saying, we asked 100 men, and that's when I gotta grab my kids and earmuffs kids, we don't know how, what the question's gonna be, so we, get, we asked 100 men, like, okay, let's wait a minute, wait a minute, pause it. We asked 100 men, what is the favorite midnight snack? And I'm thinking from home, like, oh, this is easy. And how many know all the answers from home? Like, you're the best at Family Feud from home. You ever see them struggle? You're like, how is he struggling? I know all the answers. They're just getting them all wrong. We're all the best at home, no pressure. 
And so we go over there, and I'm thinking, man, what's the best midnight snack? Ice cream, anybody an ice cream person? I'm kind of a mint chip guy myself. My daughter likes rainbow sherbet, just kill a pint for no reason. I shouldn't be doing it, but I'm saved by the grace of God, so God covers the ice cream too. Or I think cereal, I love some cereal. Cereals, I'm 40 years old, but I still have all the cereals my parents wouldn't let me eat. So I got Fruit Loops, I got Fruity Pebbles, I got, I got, I got Frosted Flakes, I got, and sometimes I just mix them together and nom, 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 I just tear up a cereal bowl at night. And so I'm thinking, it's gotta be cereal or ice cream, but every now and then somebody gives the worst answer possible. And so the guy hits the buzzer. We asked the 100 men, what is the best midnight snack? And the guy hits the buzzer and he goes, string cheese. And you see Steve's face like, bro, no one was thinking string cheese. Like, it's not on the board. You're about to get the X. You're about to get the X. But no matter how terrible or how bad the answer is, it is they always have to do this. Good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer. Let's try it together. One, two, three. Good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer. No matter how bad. String, bro, we weren't thinking string cheese. Ice cream, cereal. Come on, come up with something creative. Not string cheese. Good answer, good answer, good answer, even if it was terrible. Here, here, here's why I'm telling you the story. Because no matter how tough and hard our questions are to God and how difficult our prayer requests are to God, he always answers your prayer and he always comes every time with a good answer, good answer, good answer. God loves to answer your prayers. And every week, though, as a pastor, I hear people tell me that they struggle to pray. Maybe that's your story. Maybe it's not your story. Maybe you invited a friend today. And I hope we're that type of church where you invite your unsaved friends to come to church. And maybe that's their story. They just, I mean, I don't, I'm just, I don't, I don't know how to pray. I struggle to pray. I hear it all the time, no matter where I go or what church I'm at or if I'm at my home church. Man, I just struggle with prayer. I, I don't know the words to pray. I hear other people do it. I don't know what to say. Or, or maybe you just become so routine with prayer, it's kind of an afterthought now. Or maybe it's like, yeah, that's what my mom did. That's what my dad did. That, that was what they did. I'm, I just, I don't, I don't know. But I think part of the assignment that God brought me to Northview Church was to tell you that God, look up here, wants to speak to you in prayer. God wants to talk to you in prayer and God wants to answer your prayers. God always answers your prayers on this earth with either yes, with no, or not yet keep praying. Not yet keep, keep, keep praying. God wants to answer your prayers, and uh, I wanna just kinda clarify what prayer is and what prayer is not, because I think some people mess it up a little bit. And so here's what prayer is not. Prayer is not about religion. Pray prayer is not all tradition, and it's always gotta be memorized, and you say the same ones over and over. It can be, but it's not always that. It's not uh, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, and it's just so formal that it's detached from a person. It's not about a religion. It's not uh, a fancy language. What do I mean by that? The, the bigger the words, the better my prayer. Right, we all got that prayer warrior in our family. And by the grace of God, and I bind thee and thou us in Jesus. It's like, oh my gosh, there's such a good prayer. The bigger the words, the better the prayer. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be a, a, a genie theology. God, now that you got me and I got you, just grant me my three wishes in Jesus' name. I just want, I just want you to answer my prayers, God. No, it doesn't have to be that. It, uh, a prayer is not a name it and claim it. Because I said it, it will come to pass according to my will. It's not that either. It's not a spiritual negotiation. God, okay, if I do this, then you gotta do this for me. I think prayer has become a lot of things that maybe church people, I'm guilty of it myself, have made prayer out to be what it actually isn't. And so here's what prayer is more like in my opinion. That prayer is less like a, a religious transaction and more about a personal relationship with an intimate God. The God that wants, you, wants your heart, wants your spirit, wants to connect with you and commune with you. It's less about fancy big language and more about honest communication. Did you know that you can actually pray in your normal voice? You can, you can try it. Just like, dear God, I just, I'm struggling. That's a prayer. Jesus, I need help today. That's a prayer. God, help me. That's a prayer. God, I don't know what to say. That's a prayer. And God can handle your normal tone. He can handle your simple prayer. He can handle your big prayer. God can handle your angry voice. God, I'm just mad right now. I'm mad at you. God's a big God. He can handle that. It's honest communication. It doesn't have to be fancy language. It's not a genie theology, but it is a surrender theology. God, not my wishes, but your will be done. But there's one thing the disciples asked Jesus to do. He said, Jesus, teach us this. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus says, okay, I'm gonna teach you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. It's not about my wishes, it's about God's will being done. It's not name it and claim it, but it is by faith. That means I do pray about things that I'm hoping for 
but things that I have not yet seen. I'm believing for that in prayer. And it's definitely not a spiritual negotiation. It's a grace covenant with God. And that's why, if you notice, when we end our prayers, we always say, in Jesus' name, amen. Because that word amen just means I agree with you, Lord, according to Jesus' name and according to your plan and your purpose for my life. I, I know I've, I've prayed all of these things, but I'm ending it and, and, and end capping it with in Jesus' name, amen. The scriptures say that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And so in Jesus' name, amen, God, let your will be done in my life. Uh, if you've got your Bibles with you, would you go to Luke chapter 18? I want to teach you a, a parable that's in the scriptures and the New Testament. And if you have your maybe Bible app, you can get that out on your phone. If you didn't bring them with you, you can put it, we'll put, put it up on the screen. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV translation. And I'd encourage you, uh, bring your Bibles to church. Bring them with you. Have it in your hand. Write some notes down. But I'm going to be in Luke chapter 18 in the NIV translation, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it's a, a parable that Jesus teaches. And, and, a, and a parable is, is really a small story with a big meaning. And Jesus is teaching his disciples to be the type of followers who have, would eventually become the uh, early church leaders to be the type of believers and Christians that always pray and never give up. To pray big, tough, bold, audacious prayers that we can go to God with all that we need. And here's what it says in Luke chapter 18, starting in verse one, I'll read through verse eight. It says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And so this example, Jesus tells a story and goes, man, there was this judge. He didn't love God. He didn't have respect for God. He didn't even care what you think. But this woman comes and keeps knocking on his door, coming, help me, help me, give me what I need, give me what I'm asking for. And the man says, I don't respect you, but because of your sheer audacity, like your persistence, you're just not going away, you're not giving up, I'm gonna grant you what you're asking for. And then Jesus continues in verse six. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night, night and day? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, watch this. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I love that last little line. I want to maybe underline that and circle that and highlight that in your Bibles or click that one in your, your Bible app because you can make it all about the unjust judge and all about this, this persistent widow who's praying and coming and coming and Jesus, don't give up praying. But I love this last line and Jesus said, however, when the Son of Man comes, is he gonna find that type of faith? Is he gonna find that type of church? And Jesus is saying, I'm looking for a people that prays this way, night and day. Day and night, not, not just, you know, I, I lay my head down to sleep. and Not those type of prayers. I'm looking for the, the people that come with audacity, those tough prayers. But he's concerned because he's, he, he knows that there's a church that has enough faith to show up on Sunday, but maybe not a faith, enough faith to, to pray tough prayers. Maybe not enough faith to pray the miraculous prayers, the type we sing about. And, and we can't just sing about these things, church. We have to act them out. We have to live them out. We have to pray about it, be about it, do it, live it out. And Jesus is saying, that's who I'm looking for. Will I find that type of faith on the earth? I love this quote by Billy Graham. He said, heaven is filled with answers to prayers that nobody thought to pray. There's a whole lot of unemployed angels just sitting in heaven waiting to be dispatched on your behalf. But y'all haven't prayed. We got people not praying. We're just thinking about it. I'm just sitting in the anxiety. I, I'm just sitting in the secret sin. I'm just struggling through the addiction. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not praying in it, though. And heaven's got the answers to a whole bunch of prayers that no one thought to pray. Well, Travis, I, it, didn't, it didn't work. I tried it. It didn't work. I, I just didn't work out for me. It didn't, didn't do what I thought it would do. It works for them. It worked for, for uh, the, the, you know, my grandfather. and my, They had the prayer closet, and they had the prayer chair, and they had the prayer moment, and they had the prayer shawl, and they had the prayer beads, and the prayer hat, and they had the prayer tambourine, the whole thing, and the whole, whole experience. They had it all. It worked for them. It didn't work for me. 
Um, this week we went to, uh, when we got here yesterday morning, we went to a restaurant called, called Divi. One of, one of your church members has a restaurant called Divi. It's Kevin and his wife. And, and they bring out these little, uh, um, uh, like, a t- like, what was it called? A little sample plate. Yeah, like little boards, little boards of foods. And you could just try all the food. It was like, mm, that's pretty good. I like that one. And, mm, that's pretty good too. They brought little donuts and little, little sausages with maple syrup. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Just this one and this little chip over here. I was like, well, let me get that one. Let's take some of that. Ah, tear it up. It was great. You could just try all the little flavors. They had one that wasn't my speed. It was avocado toast. Now, if you're from California, that is the state food, avocado toast. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is. And it made its way to Indianapolis, and here it is. And then it came out on, on, on <laughs> so it says, so good. I'm like, okay, God, she, she, that's, that's her. Do you, boo, you do you. That's you. <laughs> not my speed, it's just not my thing. It's just not my thing. Uh, prayer is not that. Just something I tried, I didn't like it. I just, I like this, I like that, I like that. Jesus and his, and his word and his faith and his call to Christianity isn't a sample plate that you pick and choose. I want some of this and some of that, but I don't want that, I want prayer. That's not what prayer is. Prayer, I wrote this down, prayer is our first response and not our last resort. It's the first thing I do, not the last thing I think about. It's not the Hail Mary, I didn't have anything else to do, so I thought I'd just pray. Prayer is the steering wheel for your life and not the spare tire for the emergency. It leads me, it leads me to the future, it leads me to where I'm going, it it guides me to where Jesus is called. I talk and commune with God and Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he's teaching us today through the power of the Holy Spirit that we wanna be the type of church. We wanna be the, the capital C church, Northview Church, all of our locations, the type of Christians that pray tough prayers. We pray night, we pray day, in every circumstance, in every situation. But why? I think Jesus knows why we should pray. But you know who else knows why we should pray? The devil. And just like God has a plan for your life and he wants to speak with you, the devil has a plan for your life and he wants to speak to you too. And watch this, whoever you listen to is the one that has the power. Whatever voice you agree with is the one that has the power in your life. And so God's saying, I want you to talk to me. I got a plan for you, I got a purpose for you. I I got somebody that I wanna want you to meet. I I, I just, I I know why you should be praying and I wrote this down, lean in for this. We pray and I think Jesus wants us to pray because he knows that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. I grew, growing up as a little guy, about my son's age, uh, my, I grew up in a Christian home, and before there, there was uh, um, uh, Hobby Lobby and all the little frames that live, love, laugh, and all those little was beautiful picture frames and all that, it was a lot of cross-stitch that was framed. Anybody got those right in your house? A lot of cross-stitch in my house growing up, Christian home. And so in the bathroom, my mom had one that said, prayer changes things. And this is, this is probably TMI, but I'd be sitting there in the pot just staring at it like, what does that mean? I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, six, seven years old, prayer changed. It didn't, it didn't change. Nothing's, I don't, nothing's changing. I'm just sitting here hanging out, but nothing's changing. I don't understand it. That doesn't make sense to me. But as I, as I grew up, I, I began to understand it a little bit more. And so I, I want you to write this down, that, that prayer is the difference between where I am today and where I want to be. So if prayer changes things, maybe that makes more sense to you, that that prayer is the difference between where I am today and where I want to be. And so think about where are you today, church? Where are you at right now? What did you walk in with? What type of pressure are you facing right now in this moment? What type of pain are you dealing with? What type of anxiety and depression did you walk in with today? Well, the difference between where you are and where you want to be is just a whole lot of prayer. Prayer is the difference between where I am and where I want to be, where I am, where I need to be, where I'm supposed to be, and in between there, just, I'm, just, I'm just praying, I'm praying, I'm seeking your face. I, I, I like this. It's the divine catalyst that begins to change the things in your life that need to go, grow, move, and that need to leave so that God can get you where he has called you to be. It's the divine catalyst. Uh, if, you, if you don't um, need change in your life, I don't know if people came and you're like, I'm good, I'm, I'm, things are great. Things are great, praise God. Too, too blessed to be stressed. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. It's like, you know what I'm saying? I just came in here, and it's, it's great. It's great. You may not need prayer. That's awesome. But if you came into church today needing prayer, needing some change in your life, then, then you need to pray. But, but listen, if you want to do life without prayer, you can. And ladies, I don't know if we got any, all the single ladies say hey. We got a few. We got a few. A couple. We got a couple. A lot of married folks at Northview. That's great. That's awesome. 
I know we got, some, we got some moms praying for their daughters, but listen, if you want to date a dog, you can date a dog. You don't got to pray for that. They're everywhere. They're outside. They, some of them came to Northview Church. They're at my church. You can go visit them there in San Diego. You can just show up and get a dog, but if you want a man of God, a man that shows up, a man that comes to church, reads his Bible, knows his word. He knows more than John 3, 16. He prays for you. He, he speaks life over you. He washes you in the word, ladies. He, he, he guides you towards the Holy Spirit. He's covering you. He works hard. He smells good, has a job, has all his teeth, looks nice, irons his shirt. You can't just show up for that. You gotta pray for that. Come on, clap your hands by faith if you believe in that. I'm not trying to date dogs. I want a man of God. Well, fellas, same thing. You want, you, want, you, want, you want a Barbie girl living in a Barbie world? They, you just go get one. They're everywhere. Right? Dressed in plastic, it's fantastic. <laughs> but you want a woman of God. You want a Proverbs 31 woman, fellas, the kind of woman that would just, is gentle and kind. She's not weak, but she's strong. She's independent, but wants to serve with you. She loves Jesus. She knows the word. And she supports you in your goals. You support her and her goals. You, you can't just show up and not, you've got to pray for that. A prayer is for the individuals that want to see their lives change for the good, to live more like Jesus, to live with great purpose, and to live a life that makes a difference. And so I want to, I want to really make it practical for you today and give you some, some motivation to pray. Here's a few things that change when you and I pray. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. Prayer changes my mind. Prayer changes my mind. That's your thoughts. I love Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Love that verse. That's a life verse for a lot of us. The peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard my mind in my heart in Christ Jesus, it starts with prayer. When I was, uh, I got my first car, I inherited my mom's car, she gave it to me, it was a used vehicle, two doors, and the window seal was already kind of busted. And so I was always a little bit nervous when it would rain. And when I took it to the car wash, because the weather stripping was, was getting weak, and so it, would, it was getting real drippy, real drippy, just kind of, you know that when, you, when you're driving, you, I just hit, what was that, what was that? Just kind of came to the window. I wasn't even expecting it. It just hit me because so the weather stripping was gone and it was coming to the window. And so the windows in the front would always fog out. You never see those cars? You're like, man, bless his soul. His windows are all fogged up. That was me. I was driving by you. That was me. And so I learned to carry a little rag with me wherever I went. And so I'm, I'm in high school and pulling up the light and here comes a girl and I'm over here wiping my windows. Don't mind me, I'm good, I'm good. Just right here, 10 and two, you do you. I'm wiping the window because I can't see. It's all fogged up. But as soon as I took that rag and I wiped the windshield clean, I could see clearly. Prayer was like that cloth that I take and I take the, the rag of God through prayer and I wipe my mind clear with the peace of God and prayer, it transcends all understanding. I wasn't thinking clearly, I was confused, I was anxious, I was worried, but I took God's word and his prayer life in me and now I can see the future, I can see clearly, I can see with purpose, I can see direction, I can see what's ahead of me, I can see his plans. Come on, clap your hands by faith because God's given us the ability to pray and say I'm wiping the cloudiness clear. That's the power of prayer. Prayer changes things. It takes us from, from, from cloudy and clear, or cloudy and confused, to crystal clear in Jesus' name. Um, here's the second thing that prayer does. Number two, prayer changes my heart. Prayer changes my mind, and prayer changes my heart. That's my, my feelings, my pain, my emotional condition. I love Psalm 147, verse three. It says, he heals the brokenhearted, and binds up their wounds. Heals the brokenhearted and he binds up uh, their wounds. In, in youth group growing up, I don't know if we got, we got some students in the house, uh, we call it student ministry or youth group or what, but it was youth group back in my day. And, 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 and at the end of the night, we would all hold hands and we do like a little, uh, we're gonna pray out. And we would take prayer requests. And we go around the circle holding hands and, we, and how you know it's your turn, you squeeze the person next to you and they go and they squeeze the person. And, and, you know, and if you didn't like prayer, you just squeeze, squeeze, go to the next person, I'm not praying. But we would out loud say, Here, here's what I'm praying about. If you can pray for um, the test I have tomorrow, because I didn't study, and I'm just asking God to download all of it right now in my mind. <laughs> I believe by faith, God, you're so good, God. You're so good. Never been more spiritual than the day before your test. 
Just praying, God, download it in my mind, Lord. I'm praying, praying. Uh, but sometimes we, we'd come to the person that would go, I, I have the, an unspoken. It's an unspoken prayer. I don't know if you, you know about the unspoken prayer, but when you didn't want to say what you were going through because it was that tough or it was that serious, you just said, I just got an unspoken prayer. Oh, that's great, unspoken. But once the unspoken came out, it wasn't going, it wasn't going back. It was let, the whole, everyone was unspoken. It was, I was unspoken, you're up. Oh, I'm also an unspoken. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's your, it's squeeze the hand. It's your turn to pray. What are you? Uh, put me down for an unspoken also. I'm also an unspoken. Okay, we'll go to the next. Squeeze, squeeze. What are you? Uh, I'm, I'm also an unspoken. Funny thing, I'm also an unspoken. And what we were saying is what we're going through is, is too big or, or too sinful or too dirty or too painful to, to talk. I don't even want to talk about it. And how many know there are some things that are so painful, some kinds of, of, of evil and some kinds of burdens and some, time, some kinds of heartbreak that are too big and too tough and too weighty that you don't even have words for. I can't even speak about it because the breakup was that bad. The divorce was so messy. I, I don't even have words for it. It just hurts so bad. My heart condition, it hurts so bad that the job, someone, somebody at one of our campuses lost a job this week. Nobody knows about it. You can't even speak about it. There's a family that got the cancer diagnosis. There's somebody here that's wrestling through, through something and the temptation is to sit in the pain and not talk to anyone about it, let alone talk to God in prayer. But then I come to the scriptures and I read Psalm 30, verse two, and the psalmist writes this. He says, Lord, my God, I call to you for help. I called to you for help, and you healed me in my pain and my heartache. I, I, you healed me, God. I, I cry out to you. I, I called you for help, and, and you, you healed me. You can, you can do something about this pain so I don't sit and sink in my struggle. I pray through the pain. My, my prayer changes. I'm just all worried out and all stressed out. I'm just not talking about. Here, here, here's what I know. What you worry about the most reveals where you trust God the least. And you're worried about everything because you're praying about nothing. And I, my, my heart is broken and all confused and wrapped around and just, ah. But I, I, can, I can pray and it changes my mind and it can change my heart. And it's the difference between where I am right now sitting in this brokenness. But if I pray, it can take me to hold and healed. So prayer changes my, my mind, prayer changes my heart. Here's the third thing, prayer changes my relationships. Prayer changes my relationships, your friends, your family, uh, Luke chapter six, verse 27 through 28 says, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. Oh, wait a minute, uh, we were doing good, Travis, but I don't know about now. I, I'm, I was down for praying for me, I was down for praying for the marriage, I was, I was good for praying for the kids, and you know the breakthrough future you have for me, Lord, and the business, but, but this says pray for those who mistreat you all. Well, Sometimes it's the people closest to us that cause you to pray the toughest prayers. So, sometimes it's, and I've got moms at Northview today, but moms, you get, the kid has a blowout and just yells at you, and like, boy, I'm about to lose my salvation on you right now. You say one more disrespectful word, and, and, and it's, we're at that stage with our kids where we're telling them, you know, don't talk back to us. That's confusing for a child. He's like, what does that mean? So you don't want me to talk at all? Is that what you're saying? Like, don't talk back? So like, if you ask me a question, don't talk back, or you do want me to talk back? That's confusing for a kid. But some, it's just like, you just wanna lose it. Ah, I gotta pray. Maybe you got a friend that they recently turned their back on you and they said, I'm all in with you. Okay, we're doing it together. And you started out on this journey, whatever it was, and then they said, you know what, I'm actually all out. Like, what are you doing? You just left me hanging dry. But I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pray, though, that God would restore this thing. Maybe it's a, a, a significant other in your family that did something that really hurt you. They lied to you, and they said they'd always be honest, they'd always be faithful. Maybe they cheated on you, and they promised till death do we part, they let you down, you gotta, you gotta pray. Um, Vanessa and I sometimes will do uh, either pre-engagement counseling, pre-marital counseling, and um, we, have, we, we help lead a church similar to your size, and so there's a lot of people, but we'll try to do it with as many as we can, and we'll take them through about six weeks of, of this, this counseling and coaching and teaching and just, just equip. We're, we're not experts at marriage, we're advocates though. We believe in it, we believe it, it's a blessing from the Lord. And so during the, the conflict resolution portion of, of, our, of our time together, we love sitting down with couples and explaining that there, there's three options that couples can go through. By the way, this is, this, is, this is free, not about prayer, but great for couples. There's three things that you can do if there's conflict in a relationship. You can meet in the middle. 
Okay, you can compromise. And compromise is, is a great word in, in, in marriage, by the way. People don't like that. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna do me, do you. No, no, don't, just do y'all. There's no me, it's y'all together. And so you can meet in the middle. I'm gonna see it a little bit your way. You're gonna see a little bit my way. But if you can't meet in the middle, one of you has to meet on their side. Well, who's that? The most mature person in the relationship. So go ahead and decide who that is. Don't look to them. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. You know who it is. You know who it is. Don't look at them. So one of you has to go, you know what? You're not seeing it my way. I'm honestly not seeing it your way, but I believe that God's in this and I love you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here. And so I can meet in the middle. I can meet on their side. Or here's number three. You can just meet later and go away and pray. It's one of the hallmarkers of a, a great relationship is that we can, we can go away in times of conflict and instead of running to social media and instead of running to uh, binge watching, streaming shows, I, I run to God in prayer. And instead of running to, to your, your, your friends and instead of running to, to the lady, like, we're going out. Don't worry about him, girl. We're going out right now. Like, let's go. No, I don't go there. I run to Jesus. I run to God and I get down on my knees and I pray. And God, I know it's not working right now, but I stepped away for a moment so I can hear from you about him. So I can hear about you, uh, hear from you about her, Lord. I believe that you have some. God, heal this marriage, heal this relationship, bring us back together. And I come back renewed because I prayed. I, I was here. But through the power of prayer, God changes things. And now it's the difference between where I was and where I want to be. That's the power of prayer. So prayer can change my mind. It changes my heart. It changes our relationships. Here's number four. Prayer changes my authority. That's your power. Someone shout power. That was barely powerful. That was kind of like right there. Let's say, take a deep breath in. Say power. power. That's power right there. There's a lot of Christians walking around without power. Uh-oh. A lot of people that love God that don't have power in their life. You have an access, the ability that God has given you to speak the name of Jesus over your situation. They say, no, 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 there's a power that I have, and you have access to it. And prayer changes your authority. In Mark chapter 9, verse 28 to 29, afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? And Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer which makes me think, what were they doing? Burning sage or crystals or what were they, what kind of first century new age things where they were dancing around the evil spirit? I don't know what they were doing. But Jesus said, this, this kind only comes out by prayer and there are certain kinds of problems and devils and demons and heartaches and addictions that do not come out with a pep talk, with an attaboy, girl. They don't, they don't change, your life doesn't change, get, healed with just a little bit of counseling. There are some things in your life that, that will not change just because I made my mind up and I read a book. No, no, there are some things and kinds of problems and addictions and habits that need to be prayed over so they can be prayed out. Anybody got anything in their life that needs to be prayed out today? You walked in with something, something in your kid's life that needs to be prayed out, we'll just do it, we'll just do it right now. We did this the last two services. In Jesus' name, all addictions go right now. Lord, we speak to the illness and the sickness right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. All, all, all pornography addictions across our campuses watching online, leave now in Jesus' name. All burden and fear and insecurity and timidity, anxiety, just leave now in Jesus' name. We speak the boldness and the power and the strength, not in my name, not in your name, but in Jesus' name, be healed, cure the cancer, heal the sickness. Lord, may that couple have a child for the first time because they couldn't, they couldn't have them before. God, bring, bring the wisdom, bring the vision. Come on, clap your hands by faith with me if you believe that we have a God that has given you power and authority to speak his name. Prayer changes it all because it's not my name that I'm praying in. I'm praying in the name that is above every other name. His name is Jesus. And prayer changes things. It changes from where I am to where I want to be. Here's the fifth thing. It's my last point. Prayer changes my future. That's my direction. That's your path. 
That's your aim. It's your calling. Purpose. Prayer changes my future. Great passage in James chapter 5, 16 to 18, and it says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. Just a guy, just a girl, just a human. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. <laughs> it didn't rain on the land for three and a half years. It's incredible. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. This is incredible. Lean in for this. I want you to check in for the end. It's going to get good. Don't check out. Check in. Lean in. Elijah prays. No rain, God. And God says, great. It's going to be crispy for three and a half years. Then Elijah says, God, bring the rain. And it rains. And the crops grow. I think Elijah knows what we know today is that prayer changes things. And prayer can take us from where we are to where we want to be. And I was thinking, how can I show this to you? And I think one of the, one of the graces of my life is I, I like to leave people with, with, a, with a picture, with an image today. So you can leave going, I, I know exactly what this was about. And so I asked the team, we do something a little different today. And I thought, can I just come down here? And the camera will follow me so the canvases can see. But I had a, just a, 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 a thought of a few different people in my mind today. And the first thought was, was the single person. There's nothing wrong with being single. It's awesome. Great place to be. But there's somebody who's wrestling and there's a tension in your heart because you believe that God has called you to, to have a spouse, to get married, to meet somebody. It's been eating you up. And you've been trying all the things. You're, you're on all the sites. Let's just put it that way. But you haven't prayed about it. You've been trying to ask people, hook me up. We're on blind dates, doing this and that, doing this and that. Like, you serve in all the ministries. We know who you are. But you haven't prayed about it. You haven't surrendered that thing to the Lord. I want you to imagine that single person. God, I, I haven't brought this to you, but I'm doing it now. And I'm gonna not negotiate with you, but I'm gonna surrender this to you. And this is where I'm at today. I'm, I'm single, and I give you glory for that. And I'm gonna serve you, Jesus but I'm praying that you would help me and make me the person that the other person I'm looking for is looking for. Get them ready. Get me ready. I thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. And through that prayer, God works in your life. And it may not be in your timing, but his ways are not our ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth are his ways above ours. But he gets you there. Oh, praise God. It was just a lot of prayer. His timing, his way, his plan. If it's not God's time, you can't force it. If it is God's time, you can't stop it. But I'm praying either way. There's somebody that's in a transition season. There's somebody that's got a, a job or a, a business idea, but it's just an idea. There's somebody that has, you, you just graduated. June was grads and dads, and you just graduated. And, and you're thinking about the school, thinking about the college. Maybe you are that business person, and you just, just but it's just here. It's here, and you wrote it on a dream board maybe, but you haven't prayed about it. And you feel like you're just stuck, hitting a wall. How come they're not giving me the opportunity? How come they got picked and I didn't get picked? Did you pray about it? Did you surrender to God? And so you just take that business idea or that dream or that college education or whatever you want to do with it and say, Lord, I haven't prayed about it, but I heard today that prayer changes things. And prayer can take me from where I am to where I want to be. So God, I take this business idea, that this job transition, this moment in time, and I surrender it to you. God, would you take the, the dream, the, the, the vision, and would you turn it into something special? God, you, use it for your glory. I'll, I'll submit it to you. I'll, I'll give you the resources. I'll, you give me people, I'll, I'll help them serve you, God. Whatever you have for me, I want it. But God, I'm praying because I believe in the power of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, according to his will. And now the business is there in his time, in his way. Maybe that's your prayer today. Here's the last one I was thinking about. And I'll tell you the story. Uh, my wife and I have some friends, uh, my buddy Ashton, who serves at our church. He serves in our safety ministry. And he and his wife have been trying to have kids for 10 years. Couldn't have kids. 
And so one day, and they're just tired, they're worn out, they've had the miscarriages, they've, they've worked with the physicians, they've just tried everything, they're about to give up. Ashton comes in and says, Pastor, would you, would you pray with me? Pray with us. We've tried everything. We're, just, we're ready to give up, and we're ready just to let go and really let God do what he's gonna do for us. Either is or he isn't. Would you pray for us to have children? And so Ness and I prayed, and I remember that moment. We said, okay, Ashton, we're gonna pray. And he said, well, one more thing. I wanna show you how serious we are about this prayer, how much we believe in the miraculous God that we serve. This is a picture of the nursery that we already built. It's in our house. We even, we painted the walls, we got the colors, we built the crib. Here's a picture of me building the crib. We don't have the kid, we've had the mis- we've, we've, it's just been terrible. But we're praying now, and we're asking you to come alongside us with your family and this church to pray. We believe that prayer changes things. And so we said, okay. We're starting here with this picture in this room, in this moment, we're gonna pray. So God, we just thank you for this family and we just lift them up to you and we we prayed for them. God, would you uh, heal uh, this family, whether whether you know the complications, you know why they can't have children, but God, we surrender the outcome to you. We believe that you're a faithful God, you're a good God. You make all things work together for the good of those who love you or are called according to your purpose, God. If you could work this together, God, that would be so great. But we surrender the outcome to you. And so we began praying. We began praying. And every week he'd come in, I'd go, Ashton, how are you doing? Nothing yet. We keep, we keep praying, nothing yet. We keep praying, and nothing yet. And then one day he came in and said, Pastor, we're pregnant. Unbelievable. But we didn't get that excited because they've already been through this. But then months go by and we check in, they had their first checkup, and they had their second checkup, and they had their fourth checkup. And then now they are weeks away from having their baby. And then around Christmas season, he brings baby Ace, a baby boy, and said, this is the miracle of God. This is what the God of the impossible can do. So I want you to think about where you are today. Where are you at? What's your story? What's your situation? What change does God need to do in your life to take you from where you are to where you wanna be. We wanna pray about it today. All of our locations, would you bow your head, close your eyes with me, let's pray. Seek God. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you that this is your day, your church, your people. We thank you for the church at Northview, all the team members, the, the leaders here, the pastors, the staff, this beautiful family. God, we've come to you today believing that you are the God of the miraculous, the God of breakthrough, the God who breathed the universe into existence. And what no man or woman can do, God, you can do in the name of Jesus. And so we speak that right now over every single life. They know what they're working through. They know what change they need. My wife and I know what, we, what we're going through, what change we need. And so, Lord, we all come to you in agreement that you have the power to act on our behalf. And so would you move today, God? Move. We believe in Jesus' name that you can do it. You're able. God, are you willing? We bless you, Lord Jesus. Now, as everybody's heads are bowed and your eyes are still closed, there's somebody that needs the prayer, maybe the toughest prayer of your life, and that's your prayer to meet Jesus and say, I'm not going back to the old life. And if that's you today at all of our locations, I want you just to pray this prayer with me in the quiet of your heart. And you can repeat after me and just say these words. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I failed. I'm tired of doing it on my own. I believe that you love me. I believe that you have the power to forgive my sin. I confess you today as the Lord of my life. Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Give me a new heart. Give me a new mind. Give me new eyes to see as only you see. I love you. As everybody's heads are bowed, your eyes are still closed, no one looking around, just a holy, sacred moment. In just a moment, I'm gonna count to three, and if you prayed that prayer or anything like it to step into a relationship with Jesus or come back to Jesus, I want you to shoot your hand up on the count of three so I can see you. I'd love to pray for you. On the count of three, it takes courage and boldness. One, two, three. Put your hand up across the room. Awesome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all across the campuses. Good, good, good. God bless you. God bless you. Put them down. Lord Jesus, thank you for every soul, every person that said yes to you today, every prayer that said, Lord, we need you. Change our lives. Make us more and more, Father, like your son, Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill us fresh today, right now. We love you, we bless you, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said a good amen. 
and amen. Hey, would you clap your hands and thank the Lord, Northview Church. Welcome all of our new family into the kingdom of God. Amen.